Good morning from a very, very foggy Dubai. We are just about to head up into a hot air balloon. It's currently like 4.30 in the morning. We had an early, early start. So, good morning. Morning. How are you feeling? Good. This looks magical, dude. Yeah. This mist is crazy. The amazing thing is that we started probably around 3.45 this morning, got here around 4.30, and now we're just waiting for a bit of the fog to clear, and we're going to be rising with the sun. So I'm excited. I've never done anything like this. Now, with that being said, and we are getting into a giant flammable pocket of air and gonna soar into the sky. Something about that is a little unsettling, but we will make the most of it. Wow, the sun's like spreading through all the fog here. Right. Well, let me give you one quick introduction. This is my assistant, his name is Ivan. <laughs> So as cool as the fog was, we're actually kind of grounded right now. We're waiting for it to clear. <laughs> so typically you'd be kind of rising by now, getting in the sky as the sun is rising, but hopefully this clears up pretty soon here because I would like to get that beautiful morning light. But nonetheless, even just enjoying it from here, it's incredible. You can see here the reds in the sand. So, so nice. Guys, we have been given the go ahead, so what we're doing now is we're basically gonna inflate the balloons with cold air. Once they're finally standing up, they're full of air, we'll be pumping in the hot air, and that's what allows us to rise. You can feel the heat coming off the flamethrower there. It looks like a war machine. <laughs> Crazy. We're not exactly gonna catch sunrise anymore, but... Uh... But it's all good. We're gonna make it up. I'm excited. Uh, we're moving! It's so hot! Here we are, guys. We are flying. We are defying gravity. It's almost the wrong way. You guys can Newton's Law is a bunch of BS. We just showed that. All right, say goodbye to Dubai's green life. It's the last of the trees. Oh my gosh. You can see a bit of a balloon rising through the mist. Guys, look at all the fog. This is beautiful. Oh my gosh. It seriously looks like we're in heaven right now. Guys, we're above the mist. This, oh, there's sand up here still. Notice that the falcon is being used as a national emblem. You will see a picture of the falcon literally all over the UAE. So just please be careful extending your hands too far on this side, especially close to me. There's no denying, this is not a cheap thing to do if you come to Dubai. I'm not actually sure how much it costs. I'll put the price down below, I'll research it, but... It's like, um, <laughs> like a thousand dirhams. A thousand dirhams, so like yeah, about 350 breakfast. bucks. Includes breakfast, so you'll see the rest of the experience in a bit. Um, but this is one of the most magical things I've ever seen. The way the light hits the dunes, early morning, it's just so beautiful and peaceful up here. Aside from the massive flamethrower that goes off every couple minutes. What do you think, Captain? How long till we hit the ground? Five minutes. So. Five minutes, eh? Alright, well, my last five minutes vlogging, ever. Cut it, bro. <laughs> Alright, we are coming right back down to earth. Start taking your landing positions, please. Oh. Alright guys, camera's away, gotta go. <laughs> we're gonna hit some... What, we're gonna land here? <laughs> okay, I hope so. Hello, we come in peace. Hello, Earthlings. You just didn't move your balloon. Very nice guy. Here we go! Here we go, 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 go. <laughs> And smile for the camera! Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 Be brave, be brave! Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Nice. oh my god! So, apparently that's a smooth landing. Don't want to know what a not smooth landing looks like. You have to take out the academy. What was that? Take out the hook. That's right, yeah. Well, 
I guess as far as tipping over the basket, that was not so bad. Maybe made things a little interesting. Oh, One question. <laughs> Woo! How was it? Dope, dude. That was awesome. Alright, we're getting into this four wheel outback and we're going to get some breakfast right now. It is of course still Ramadan, so Nabil is fasting, but uh, we're going to like a Bedouin breakfast, and so we're going into the desert. Super stoked about this. All right, is this for real? So this is what we're taking to breakfast. Guys, look, there's different colors, going from like the beige, sand color, red, blue, and the yellow one. Yeah, here we go. All right. Cut him off. And we're off in our vintage Land Rovers. Woo! All right, guys. So we've just arrived here at breakfast and it's very much like a Bedouin style kind of thing. Ooh. What do we got? Bread. Bread. That sounds, I'm sold. I'm sold. That's the word Alright guys, so here we go. I've got eggs, some vegetables in a typical uh, Middle Eastern bread. But the strange thing, I left Bali to come and eat nasi goreng all the way here in the desert. Not gonna complain, I like nasi goreng. All right, so this is Captain Andrew. And Hello. he just came and said hi. And then he told me a story, and then I was like, what the heck, how is this not like a movie or a YouTube channel? Basically, he's traveling around the world with a truck and a massive what? Hot air air balloon. balloon. Yeah. A hot air balloon. And so you're going to the Americas next? Yes, yeah, so I'm heading to uh, Uruguay, and I'm going to be going right through the Americas, all the way to southern, central, northern America, heading all the way to the north, all the way to Canada. And so your reasoning for flying the hot air balloon is like yeah, it's, it's your passion? Or? Yeah, encouraging kids to follow their dreams. I wanted to be a balloon pilot since I was six, six years old, so I wanted to uh, share my passion with kids. Tell them, you know, they need to, should follow their dreams as well. So this is all just like your own passion project. There's no, no financial there's no, there's reward no for sponsors. this. There's it's no just sponsors. Me making some money. And, wow, uh, and that's super it. cool. We are head back to the Land Rover, and um, honestly, this has been an incredible adventure this morning. This is all with Balloon Adventures, um, also part of like the Platinum Heritage Group. So it's been an awesome day. Definitely a huge recommendation. It might take a bit of a dent in your wallet. Uh, it's not the cheapest activity around, that's for sure. We are right back here at the Dubai Mall. The guys actually dropped me off here. Uh, they had a little bit of work they had to do, and uh, to my surprise, I found a good friend of mine from back home, all the way here in Dubai. Now, he's not one to talk much, but he goes by the name Tim. Tim Hortons. <laughs> uh, it's a Canadian coffee shop, by the way. It's like, pretty good, I like it. All right, so, Nabil, what are we doing? We are going to one of the most epic rooftops, one of the most beautiful views in Dubai. Okay, all right. So there's a little bit of jumping around, it probably won't make sense, but basically, Akshay here picked me up from Dubai Mall, <laughs> drove us here to the Renaissance, oh. and uh, now we're gonna rooftop it. We actually have permission to be up here. We've been kindly led up here by the staff working at the Renaissance. Uh, the manager has made some arrangements for us, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited. This is kind of like one of the things you see all over YouTube when you see Dubai, is the incredible skyline. So I'm excited we get to see it for ourselves. We just gotta go up here to the top. So Nabil pulled some serious connections here. Some wasta. Yes. <laughs> some wasta, bro, some wasta. <laughs> you got it right, yeah. And this is where they're... You work for the Renaissance? Renaissance, yeah. What do you do for them? Uh, social media navigator. Ah, oh, awesome. So I do like uh, all social media uh, rooftop shootings, including yeah. this one. So that's how we got up here. You gotta be very careful with every single step here. Woo! And right there, the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. So beautiful. Successful rooftoping. That was awesome. 
the most Dubai of all activities, checked right off the list. I've only been here like two and a half days and I've seen so much, done so much. It's incredible. I'm gonna feel very accomplished by the end of this trip here. But a huge thank you to the Renaissance Hotel, Werther especially. He organized that little, you know, rooftop session for us. He had security there. It was all done properly. So guys, if you're coming to Dubai, if you're gonna have a rooftop session, make sure it's done the right way. It's incredible. We easily got one of the best vistas in the entire cityscape. And right now we're heading off to what is going to be the new up and coming posh area of Dubai known as Creek Harbor. How far away is it? It's about 15 to 16 minutes away from where we are right now. Okay. Yeah. And so if I'm not mistaken, this is actually where they're building the brand new world's tallest freestanding tower. It'll even be taller than the Burj Khalifa. And it's crazy. Like, I mean, you just look at this right in front of me here and you're like, first of all, this tower is just way too tall. It doesn't <laughs> physically make sense, and yet they're going to top it. Yeah. So here we are, we are now in Creek Harbor, the up and coming area. This place is just exploding with wealth. Everything looks so beautiful. There's photos of yachts everywhere, <laughs> beautiful granite countertops, <laughs> stainless steel appliances. I'm moving to Creek Harbor. I'm on in the- What's good? Working it. What I've noticed is that you've got a bit of a haze here, sort of like Bangkok, so every night, apparently they get sunsets that would just blow your mind and they take it for granted because they're used to it, but- No, we don't. You don't well, yesterday we had the most amazing sunset and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever. I mean, you have nah. better sunsets than do you, like No, do. no, these are incredible. Really? When you have that, like, polluted kind of haze, oh, it creates polluted. a wow. beautiful sunset. <laughs> Oh, it's just amazing. It looks like melted gold, just rippling. How was the sunset tonight? Amazing, look at that. It's beautiful, hey? Marco and... Sylvia. Sylvia, and you guys are from Belgium. Switzerland. Switzerland, I've done this twice now. <laughs> Coincidentally, they actually had talked to the same marketing manager at the Renaissance, and so when we went onto the rooftop, that's where we found each other. And uh, I think we're gonna go grab some dinner now, yeah? Definitely. Yeah. All right, let's do it. That has been a little tour around Dubai. Right now we're heading all the way back to the Renaissance because Kindly Werther has set us up with a dinner tonight. Really excited to try it out. I think we're going to an actual Arabic restaurant or what kind of food is it? It's got uh, your traditional Arabic food. The restaurant's name is called Bahar. Yeah. It's got one of the best shishas in, in town. Oh. Like one of the best, some of the best Arabic foods in town. So I think it's a perfect place to have a Ah. Uh, and like I've had a tiny bit of uh, Middle Eastern food, but I'm still looking to really try some stuff. So you'll have to tell me what to order. Yeah, for sure. I haven't eaten too much today, like because of Ramadan, even if you're not participating in Ramadan, you can't eat in public, you can't even drink in public. So you typically will not find yourself eating that much unless you're at home. So uh, let's just say that roast, that everything, it all looks so beautiful right now. So the guys have just gone downstairs for prayer and uh, right now I'm gonna try here a date. I don't know if I've ever even had it before, but they're so popular here in the Middle East. Wow, pretty nice. It is very sweet. I give it a six out of 10. So we've got lamb, we've got some sea bass, we got dates for days, we have hummus, which I love hummus. Definitely my favorite thing here on the table. So I'm learning here that this is one of those meals where you're supposed to eat very slowly, could be like drawn out over two hours. Not very much my style. I like to eat very fast. And so after that incredibly tender lamb, a bit of sea bass, I'm already starting to feel full. But the social thing about this kind of meal is that you can go get a shisha, you can go sit outside, enjoy some shisha, some coffee, some dates, some chocolate, and then hopefully come back for some more food. This is a new world that I'm not used to, so. We have three flavors. We have lemon and almond, we have frozen pistachio, and we have hazelnut and chocolate. I've never seen anything like this. How do you cut it? I'm gonna try this one, the hazelnut and chocolate. That sounds pretty good. I don't know what to expect from the flavoring. You just cut it, huh? This is kunafa. Una kunafa? Kunafa. Kunafa. Yeah, this is double cheese. Yeah. So, we have a small cut. It's cheese? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's like not the cheese that we have, the savory cheese. It's a sweet cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Arabic coffee. Arabic coffee. Kind of looks milky. This is really good. It's very, very sweet. Yeah. Tastes like a chocolate chip cookie a little bit. All right, it is time to eat the orange dessert cheese. Never thought I'd be saying that, but here we go. For me, it's already gonna be hard for me to like it just because of the color. <laughs> like, I can't think of anything that's orange and like reminds me of something remotely good for dessert. It's actually pretty good. Mmm, okay. I think cheese is not a good way to describe it. It tastes more like a bit of like a, almost like a cake. <laughs> it's a bit thicker than a cake, but it's good. Now I'm gonna try this little 
Arabic bowl. Arabic bowls? What? <laughs> Anyone want some bowls? Okay. This tastes like a uh, Timbit from Tim Hortons. So it's basically Canadian dessert. This is why I don't have a tasting channel. And now for the jelly nut thing. Yeah, that, that one's a little strange. I gotta pass this one on to you. If you're gonna try some Arabic desserts, you gotta try Omali. It's like a bread pudding. Very, very tasty. Served nice and warm. I love it. Kinda tastes a bit like a custard. We're going hard on the shishas. Ooh. Everything from the Arabic desserts to the shisha. This was an awesome meal. Time to head back to Nabil's. Well, okay, we got one more thing we're gonna do here. We gotta put in the work. We gotta work off what we just did. So if you guys didn't already know, I've actually been doing one month of CrossFit. I'm pretty proud of myself because I made it to about 25 of 30 days. I missed a few sessions here. I'm about two or three days without working out. So uh, we're gonna make up for that. We're gonna get a nice workout in because Nabil actually used to be a trainer. So hopefully he can put me through my paces. I'm gonna keep myself accountable here. It's a cool gym. Yep. Should I call the paramedics now or? Hey! <laughs> so right now, we have to add up a cumulative 500 dips. So that's a lot of dips. And then in between dip sets, you have to do 10 of these where you go knees to your armpits basically. Show us what we're doing right now. We're gonna do bear crawls. It's a burnout for our workout. We finished so many workouts, 500 dips. And now we're gonna do bear crawls. So this is why bears hibernate all the season. Cause it's freaking exhausting. He looks a little strange, people judge him, but he does his best. I feel like a bear. Huh? So I feel like a bear. A bit of excess fat, <laughs> and I'm ready to uh, call it quits for the season. Come on bro, one more round, one more round. Go, go, go. What is up guys and welcome to the most up-to-date portion of the vlog. This is happening right here, right now, assuming that you're not watching this at a later date. But uh, yeah, guys, I wanted to let you know that I am back home in Vancouver, Canada. I'm actually back here because it's one of my childhood best friend's wedding and so I'll be driving up to Kelowna in about... Well, three hours from now. It's about a four hour drive to get there. Katy was supposed to be here, but long story short, one of our upcoming trips, I'm giving it away. We're going to Australia, and the horrible, horrible thing is that for her as a Peruvian, she needs to apply for a visa. It's about a two week process. That part's okay. It sucks, but it's okay. Uh, but what happened was she needed a biometric scan, meaning they scan her eyes for a criminal check and just to have all her information on file. But because Canadians and Americans aren't required to have biometric scans, they don't have a single facility for her to get it done in Canada or the US. So this morning she had to book a really quick ticket to Mexico City and so she's getting that scanned tomorrow and then she'll fly right back, back to the wedding. So yeah, that's kind of an up-to-date like WTF moment that we're currently dealing with. But as long as it all gets sorted in time, it will be worth it because it's an exciting campaign we've got there. I'm wondering what are you guys thinking of the Dubai series so far? I hope you guys are really enjoying it. I know that it was one of my favorite trips and now I want to do the fan of the day. That's definitely going to around the good world. A huge thank you for the support and I'm so glad you're enjoying the new videos. Guys, as always, a big thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button located right there. If you want to see more videos like this, there's a ton more to come. And uh, as always, let's get lost again in the next one.